Wow, I, I can see there is the glory of God in the church in this morning. Therefore, in a, in a prayerful way, let's proceed. Let's continue. Uh, just prepare your hearts, church. I want to thank God for this morning. I want to bless the Lord that he has given me this opportunity to lead as the month begins. And therefore, I request church, wherever you are, just be in the presence of the Lord and allow the presence of the Lord to reach you wherever you are. If you're in the hospital, listening to, in the hospital, let the presence of the Lord minister to you. May the glory of God come in your homes, in your families, in your workplaces, those who have already reached there. Therefore, as we worship in this song, may you open your hearts and allow the Lord to take the stage. And have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. Yes, Lord. May you take the stage this morning. When you're done, yes, Lord. Please take the glory. May you take the glory when you're done using us, O oh God. Yes, Lord. To see you glorified. Yes, Jesus. Take the stage. Take the stage, Lord, as the month is beginning, Lord. Have your way. May you have your way in September, O oh God. I'm your vessel, Lord. We are just your vessels, O oh God. When you're done, yes, Lord. please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Oh, dear Lord, I ask you to take your place. Yes, Lord, may you take the place in our hearts. Speak through. Take the place, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That your name be glorified. Your name will be glorified above every other name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. And Father, as we have invited your presence, O oh God, you will take the stage. You will take the stage, Lord. Amen. Good morning, church, once again. I'm called Lilian Atkunda, and I'm blessed this morning to really lead us through this beginning of the month. The topic for the entire month is, My glory, I will give no other. And the scripture we are going to look at is Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory... I will not give to any other, nor my praise to carved images. Friends, when I saw this topic, I was humbled. Because this topic indeed, this scripture indeed shows us that there are two people, that there are two sides. There is one side of God that takes the glory. And there is another side of the world that takes the glory. So as we pray this morning, I pray that you will choose which side you will be on. There is no way you can glorify God and glorify Satan at the same time. Therefore, I pray that as we go through this topic together as a team, and as the beginning of the month, this is a spiritual gate. We are going to release a prophetic word upon our lives, upon the church, upon your families. I'm going to preach in a prayerful way. Therefore. I know Eria these days, he downloads the, the sermons. So do not worry so much to record the scriptures I'll be referencing. So I want you to reflect on this in a prayerful way. Because this is the gate, you all have been given authority that you will declare a thing and it will be established. Therefore, I pray that as we go through this sermon together, may you purpose to let the name of God be glorified. If not, it will be Satan's name that will be glorified, which we do not want, which God does not want, because he created us, all of us, to glorify his name. Let's begin by looking at the forms of God's glory. 
we could be talking about the glory of God and maybe someone is saying, but what is this? What is this glory of God? And I want to thank the Lord for the sermons that have been going on. If you've been following very keenly, the glory of God has been talked about in many forms. But this morning, the Lord has led me to share with you that the glory of God can come in a form of consuming fire. Therefore, as someone is wanting to take the glory of God, I hope you know what you'll be doing. If God is a consuming fire and you want to position yourself to take that glory, I pray it doesn't burn you. This morning, this is a prophetic word. I pray that the Lord will touch our hearts to break any hard heart, that the Lord will allow his spirit. You will allow the Lord's spirit to minister to you and his name will be glorified and he will be the only one to take the glory. God is the consuming fire. The glory of God can come as a consuming fire. And we will look at 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38, 39. Then the fire of God fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and even the stones and the dust, and it leaked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face downward and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. This was the time of the time of Elijah when he offered the sacrifice to God and he prayed. Many of you always use this scripture. God, you are the consuming fire. Let your consuming fire come down. This is the scripture. So the glory of God comes. When the glory of God comes, there can be a consuming fire. Let's go in Exodus 24, verse 17. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. That is how also the glory of God can be seen. The glory of God can also be seen as an earthquake, as lightning. And we are going to see in Matthew chapter 28, verse 2 and 3. This was the time of resurrection of Jesus when he was put in the grave. The scripture says, there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. Friends, when the glory of God comes, there is an earthquake. The foundations will shake. And indeed, the stones that have been on those graves where the witch doctors had buried your destinies will be rolled away. There will be a lightning. And when lightning comes, there is that consuming fire. Number three, we can see the glory of the Lord in form of the speed. The hand of the Lord can come upon you and you overtake your enemies. That is how the glory of God can come. We will also see that in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46. The power of the Lord came on Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Some versions say when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, he overtook the chariots of Ahab. Imagine someone who is walking on foot, their foot, runs and overtakes a chariot, a chariot. Imagine that power. That is the glory of God. I want you to start imagining in your life where the Lord has shown his glory. And maybe you have just been tempted to take his glory and say, ah, I'm the one, I'm the one. I'm, if I wasn't the, here, things would have not happened. And you're just glorifying yourself and you want to take the glory of God. My friend, the glory of God is a lightning. It is an earthquake. It is a thunder. Another form is the glory of God can be manifested in form of angels, the seraphims, the cherubims. And we are going to look at Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. In the year King Hosea died, I saw the Lord, high, exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. What a beautiful thing. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they were flying. The, Isaiah is, is showing you the 
how he met the glory of God. Verse 3, and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The angels were worshipping. The angels were worshipping. Verse 4 says, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with the smoke. Friends, when the glory of God comes, there will, there will be a smoke. There will be that environment of worship. Hmm? But verse 5 tells us, what to me, what to you, friends, if the Lord can come, he cannot drink and clean lips. Isaiah was saying, want me for I'm a man of unclean lips and I have and I live among the people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the Lord Almighty. Friends, we need to repent before the Lord as we come to his temple. As we come to his temple, you need to remove every filth garment so that the glory of the Lord will come, so that those angels will come, those beautiful angels with wings, they will cover you, they will cover you, they will cover you, and you will see the glory of the Lord. Another way we see the glory of the Lord, when the glory of God comes, the doors open, the prisons open, the gates will open, and the King of Glory will enter. We can see that in Acts chapter 16, verse 25 up to 26. You all know this scripture. At midnight, when Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord, the, and the other prisoners were listening, suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. We've already seen that God can be manifested in form of an earthquake. When there was that earthquake, there was a violent shaking of the foundations and the prisons shook. At once, all the prison's doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. This morning, as we reflect on the glory of God, I speak to any door that had been closed in your life. I speak to any gate that had been closed on your life. Any prison where the enemy had put you, when the glory of God comes, when the glory of God comes, they will all shake. The foundations will shake and those chains will break in the name of Jesus. Let's proceed. When the glory of God comes, we are in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and 9, up to 9. Up to nine. Another way we, have, we can see the glory of God. We see in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, Satan was defeated in heaven and he was thrown down. And our father was able to sit on the throne in heaven. Friends, the scripture says, war broke in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. The devil was not strong enough. They lost their place in heaven. Hallelujah. The great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent called the devil, O oh, Satan, who leads the whole world astray, he was hurled to the earth and, and with his angels. Friends, the glory of God was in heaven. There was a war. And when God defeated Satan, he was hurled down. Satan was hurled down. And we see the glory of God being manifested. The Bible says that heaven is the throne of God and the earth is his footstool. I want to tell you, holy, I want to tell you, church, may you prepare your heart so that the Lord will get where to put his feet. We don't want to see God's feet hanging. He needs to find where to put his feet, and that will be in a holy place. May your heart be holy that the Lord will put his feet as he's seated on the throne in heaven. Hallelujah. Great. Now, I wanted to take you through that. There are many forms of God's glory in the Bible, but the Spirit of God led me to share with you this. Now, most of you who are involved in deliverance ministry, I hope now you see what we are involved in. By the grace of God, I serve in intercession ministry. And when you are at warfare, you, the devil is at, the demon is oppressing someone and you say, God, I need your mercy now. I need your mercy. Jesus, oh, forgive me. You are repenting in, in front of a demon. I have seen this. That there is a time. Someone saying, God, forgive us. And the demon is oppressing someone down. Can you call upon the thunder of the Lord? Can you call upon the lightning of the Lord and say, God, in the name of Jesus in Matthew 28, when the angel came on the grave, there was lightning. There was light. And call upon that power of God, the consuming fire. 
So you need to know the weapons of warfare because we do not fight against flesh and blood. And when all this is done, the, the worship song I, I, I gave you, I, I will start it with, which says, take the place, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. When you're done, may you take the glory. When you're done with that deliverance ministry, don't go home and say, oh, today I drove out demons. Huh? They, you, with me, when I come, they just run away. My friend, the Bible tells me that do not be, I'm paraphrasing, don't rejoice that the demon, the demon is free when you pray, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Because God can use you, God can use anyone to deliver his people. There is someone in the background, kindly mute. So friends, we've gone through the glory of God, what it is. Now I want to take you through a few examples in the Bible of people who wanted to parade themselves to take the glory of God and what happened to them. And briefly, I want to take you back to the creation story in Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter two, verse seven. The Lord God formed man from dust and breathed into his nostrils, breath of life and man became a living being. First of all, this shows us that we'd never created ourselves. I, I used to do something interesting. When I was in high school, I was in Rubili SS and we had a very big playground. And in weekend, I used to go there, sit alone. But when I look back, I now know why God did this. I used to go and sit there alone and reflect on God's creation. And I used to ask myself, God, if you had not created man, would I have existed? If you were not there, what would have existed? Friends, if you want to do that thing, you will run mad in your mind. I want to tell you the truth. I would find myself, my mind is going, my mind is going, thinking and stop. I would feel headache automatically. That means I would want to contend with God to find what, what was there before God, what friends. I want to tell you, anyone who stands in the way of the Lord, anyone who stands in the way of the Lord, whether you are a witch doctor, whether it is anything, I want to tell you the Lord will deal with anyone who stands in the way of the Lord because he's the only one who deserves the honor and the glory. Let's proceed to verse 15 of chapter 2. The Lord took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work in it and take care of it. I pray that you, you mark that, take care of it, not to own it. We are just caretakers. We do not own anything in this world. You can find that in Psalms 24. The earth and its fullness is the Lord's. When we continue in verse 18 of the same chapter, God looked at a man and he never wanted the man to be alone. He made him a helper. I thank the Lord this morning, my, my, my best friend, my husband is on call. He blessed me this morning. I was going to preach, and I bless the Lord that he's online. Mr. Tom Himse, may God bless you. Um, so God made a helper for the man, a suitable one, a suitable one. That means you should not just pick a spouse. You should let the Lord guide you. Verse 22, the Lord made a woman from the rib he, he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. That is why a man, verse 24, I'll be skipping so that I just note the critical ones. Verse 24. That's why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Verse 25. And Adam and his wife were naked, and they felt no shame. Before they sinned, you all know this story. Before Adam and Eve sinned, we are tempted by Satan, who wanted to take God's glory. Now we are in chapter 3 the fall of man, before Adam and Eve were naked and they never minded. But when Satan took over and lied and tempted Eve, that is when Adam had left Eve alone. If Adam had remained there to take care, friends, husbands who are here, make sure you take care of your wives so that, <laughs> praise the Lord. So the serpent took God's glory 
by overruling what God had commanded to Eve and Adam not to eat of the fruit. So we see in chapter 3, verse 24, we see God's anger. And God released the curse. God released the curse on the serpent that it will walk, it will crawl on its berry and eat the dust, dust. You know this. Then to the woman, I on verse chapter 3 of verse 16, the woman also received the curse. I will make your pains in childbearing very severe with painful labor. You will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Verse 17, also the man received his curse. Cast is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat from the food all the days of your life. Friends, we got a curse that time when the devil tempted, tempted Eve and it wanted to take God's glory. But friends, I want to tell you this morning, we have a high great priest whom you can come before Women who are here, who, if you know you're pregnant, if you know you're planning to conceive, may you invite the Lord that he will take care of your pregnancy. Because this curse, the devil still uses it to affect many women. We hear of people dying when they are giving birth. So I pray that you continue to invite the presence of the Lord in your pregnancy. The men, our husbands, as you go to work, may you say, God, today as I'm going to work, I pray for your blessing. Holy Spirit, go before me so that you break that curse that was laid upon us. Because you find a man is struggling. You find a man saying, I, I hustle the entire year. I cannot get anything. You need to invite the presence of the Lord to work through you so that his name will be glorified. Verse 23 of chapter 3, Genesis. So the Lord banished him from the garden of Eden to work from the ground which he, had, which he had taken. What lessons would we learn from this? One, God deserves his glory in our lives. Else we will attract curses, we will attract death, we will attract suffering, hardship if we transfer his glory to other authorities. Two, there must be obedience for us to see the glory of God. There must be obedience. There must be respect for God's commandments for us to experience the glory of God. Listen to the command of God and obey it. Uh, part four, there must be repentance, brokenness instead of blaming. Eve, it is this one who, who gave me, the man, it is my wife. But friends, if they had said, God, we are here, we are sorry. If they had come in repentance and brokenness, hmm? Ugandans, we like to blame the president. We blame the MPs. We blame certain tribes. Because of this tribe, we can't get jobs. But friends, I want to tell you, God is not after your blame games. God is after looking for that one man who will stand in the gap for his glory to be seen on the land. If you see Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 1 up to 31, there was a lot of sin in Jerusalem. There was fornication, there was adultery, there was bloodshed, any sin of every kind. And God wanted to destroy that land. But he says in verse 30, I looked for a man who would stand in the gap so that I, did, so that I don't destroy the land, but I found none. Friends, I pray that God will raise up intercessors. God will raise up prayer warriors who will stand in the gap of Uganda and will stop the blame game. Will stop the blame game. It is this one. It is the other one. It is the other one causing this. In the church, everyone is blaming the other one. The, we need to stand in the gap. We need to stop the complaining so that the glory of God comes. The glory of God comes and he takes over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hope we are still following. We have now seen man and Eve and Adam, how they fell, and the glory was taken by Satan. But God is faithful as we continue to see in the Bible. When you come to God in repentance, he will forgive. He will, he will open those streams of life where there was hardship. He will bring uh, ability. Let's look at another man, which we all know very well. There is this Job. Job is another man that went through pain and wanted to, to give up on God. In Job chapter one, we remember that the devil came to God and said, God, this man, this man loves you because of what you've blessed him with. Eh? Some of you have been blessed beyond measure and the devil is there seeing, he's not happy. 
he's before God and saying, no, you have blessed Lillian because Lillian is happy because you have given her these children. But I pray for the grace that when God blesses you, you will remain, you will remain in the temple, you will remain in the hands of the Lord and say, God, if you do not help me, if you do not help me, I will not manage this. Whether you are earning a hundred millions, whether you are a top CEO, you say, God, if you do not help me with this job, I am just a vessel. I am just a vessel. I need your hand. Friends, the devil came to Job and God says, this is my servant. Do not touch him. I know he is faithful. A lot happened. Children died. The animals died. But we see Job being a human being. He started grumbling. His friends advised him the other way. And worse of it, all, all we see in Job chapter 2, verse 9, the dear wife of Job, the dear wife of Job saying, can't you curse God and you die? I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will give people helpers, suitable helpers who will lift the hands of husbands, who will lift the hands of wives and say, no, this situation is hard, but let us bow down and pray. Friends, I pray that you promise yourselves that in this marriage, we will hold our hands and pray. We will not curse the Lord. And in Job chapter three, Job didn't curse the Lord, but indeed he started to curse the day he was born. And Job chapter 3, verse 11, we see Job saying, why did I not perish at birth? Why did, not, why did I not die as I came from the womb? Where were, there, where were, there, why were there knees to receive me, the breasts that I, should, that I should be nursed? Verse 13, for now I would be lying down in peace. I would be asleep at rest. We see Job who was a rich man crying to God, why didn't you kill me at birth? Just because the Lord has tested your faith. Friends, may you have spiritual eyes, may your spiritual eyes keep awake that when there is a shaking, when there is a testing of your faith, you will stand still. You will stand still and say, I will not bow down to any idol. I will bow down to only God of Misha, Chedrach, and Abednego. When Misha, Chedrach, and Abednego were thrown in the fire, they said, we will not bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. We will be thrown in the fire if our God does not save us. If our God does not save us, we will die. But we see the merciful God in Daniel chapter 3. God released his angel in the fire. And the Bible says that not even smoke would be traced on them. You can imagine. Friends, I pray that when the Lord shakes your faith, you will be stand still. You will know the seasons and the times of your testing. You will know the times. You will know the seasons. The devil will not blindfold you. And you say, oh God, now you gave me this job. There is a lot of struggle. You gave me this marriage. I am struggling. There is nothing to eat. And you leave the man, you leave the wife, and you go outside, and you go for a sugar daddy who has money. You go for a sugar mommy who has money. And by the time you come back, you will take 20 years to restore what the locusts have eaten just because you didn't understand the seasons. Praise the Lord. We later see in Job 38, when God answered Job, after he had said, God, why didn't you kill me when I was born? Job 38, this is a scripture that humbles me down, that humbles me down and I'm like, God, forgive me for grumbling. The Bible says in verse 2, who is this who obscures my counsel by words without knowledge? Now embrace yourself. Now brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall inform me. This is God asking Job, why are you grumbling? Why are you saying this and this? Remember, it is God who had blessed him with these things. Verse 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Vastorov, I've, I've run down to Vastorov. In your days, have you commanded the morning or assigned the dawn its place? Friends, each of you slept last night. I'm very sure you all slept and said, God, we are going to sleep. We pray that you bring us safely in the morning. Friends, it is not a must that you will sleep and wake up. 
It is just the grace of the Lord. It is just the grace of the Lord. So before we, we, we grumble, before we say, God, where are you? Why are you doing this to me? Uh, this one I have given up. I have given up. And you end up in a witch doctor's house and you end up transferring God's glory to another authority. I pray that you will remember that when you sleep, there is that power which commands the morning to come. It commands the evening to come. Praise the Lord. So later we see the glory of God in Job 42, which is in form of restoration. When Job had prayed, when Job had prayed for his friends, there was a blessing again to him. There was restoration of whatever he had lost. When Job prayed, when Job prayed and stopped grumbling and offered himself to God once again, we see the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, friends. Let us see briefly another example of Pharaoh. Pharaoh or Pharaoh, whichever language you speak. Pharaoh. <laughs> we see Pharaoh wanted to take God's glory in Exodus chapter 1, verse two, Exodus chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. We remember there was a Joseph in that generation, and the Bible says that he died. I'm paraphrasing verse 6 to 10. And there were Israelites, the God's chosen people, who got a new king. And these people were increasing in number. They were God's people, covenant people. But this Pharaoh came and said, why are these people growing? Why are they progressing? He mistreated them. He mistreated them. And we see in verse 15 to 22, this king gave a decree and said, midwives, if you find any boy born, kill them. If you find a girl, let her live. But the Bible says that there were some midwives who feared the Lord when a boy was born, and that is Moses. When Moses was born in that season, the midwives feared the Lord and preserved him. I want us to pick two prayer points here. Friends, I want you to know that if you are not in the Lord, there are earthly men and earthly women with satanic powers who are fighting your destiny. There was this spirit of Pharaoh, spirit of death that was running after Moses who was to deliver the children of God. So may you pray that the Lord will deal with any spirit of death hovering around you to kill your destiny. Exodus chapter 2, we see Moses growing up. We see he's growing up. He later uh, got a family. Then in chapter 3, in chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, as he was tending fish, uh, bush, uh, he was tending sheep, sorry, he saw a bush burning. In chapter 3, he saw a bush burning, and Moses wanted to come close to it. But that voice of God says, put off your shoes. You are approaching a holy ground. Friends, you cannot come before the Lord with sin, with filth. You come before the Lord in repentance. In repentance, the glory of God is a consuming fire. If you do not repent, the Lord's glory can harm you. So I pray that as you approach the throne of God, you come in repentance, you put off every filth, you put on every filth so that the Lord is able to speak to you. Quickly, we all know this story. I'm going to, to run to, to Exodus chapter 14, verse 4. The Lord says that he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart, that king of that time, and he was going to pursue the Israelites. And the Bible says, verse 4, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, he will pursue them. But I will gain my glory, I will gain the glory for myself through Pharaoh and his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Friends, the Lord will allow your enemy to be hardened. And when he finishes dealing with that enemy of yours, the glory of God will come and everyone will say, oh my God, indeed there is a God here. Indeed, if it was not by the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, we wouldn't have gone through this. Sometimes our enemies are hardened, the hearts are hardened. You hear someone has done this on the church, someone has done this on the servant of God. And you say, hey, why is he doing this? Sometimes God prepares these things. So that when all is done, you find people are running to repent. Someone calls you and says, Lillian, I'm sorry. Maybe someone calls Reverend Florence and says, 
Florence, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was doing this witchcraft on you, but the hand of the Lord met me last night and it hit me. I could not breathe. Now I'm sorry. I pray that the Lord will visit any enemy against all saints, anyone fighting against the revival in all saints. May the hand of the Lord come upon any, any hand of Satan, any idol worship that is fighting against the glory of God in all saints, in our families, in our marriages. Just release a prophetic word upon your family. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will release your eyes anger upon anything fighting against our marriages, the children in the schools, in our homes. There's a lot of immorality. There's a lot of witchcraft. There's a lot of any evil thing. May the Lord pursue any enemy pursuing us in the name of Jesus. Verse 10 to 11. So we see that as Pharaoh approached the Israelites, remember this is when the Red Sea had been parted. I have skipped many scriptures. When the Red Sea had parted, this is where verse 4 comes in. Moses and the Israelites, they went through. But we see Pharaoh's army pursuing them. This is where we are coming from. So verse 10 up to 11, the Bible says that as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried to the Lord. They said, verse 11, they said to Moses, what is it? Because because where there are no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die here, what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Friends, at times the devil pursues us. At, at times our enemies fight us, against us. And we start saying, hey, why? Maybe you, are, maybe you are working in Kampala. Maybe the Lord shifts you to Barara for a reason. And when you reach in Barara, you start saying, remember you were in Kampala, you had issues maybe, maybe you were far apart from your marriage and God takes you back to your marriage. Then you start grumbling. God, why did you bring me back here? This wife is disturbing me. Now you're, you're saying, I wish I can go back to the misery I had in Kampala instead of being here. Yet the Lord wants you to reunite with your family. And you find yourself in a state of grumbling. But friends, this morning, I want you to, to reflect on your life. Reflect on your workplace. What is pursuing you? What is pursuing you that you feel like giving up? That you, that you want to say, God, why am I here? Why am I here? Maybe you are a woman that is waiting upon the Lord. You are like an Hannah. Hannah was saying, God, he, she was just crying. Why is Penina giving birth? Let me, I have no child. But when Anna said, God, I will stop uh, grumbling. I will say, God, if you give me this child, I will offer him to you. Friends, can we change our prayer life? Say, God, I need this job. If you give it to me, it will be yours. So that whatever is pursuing you will hear the voice of God and God will take his glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see in Genesis 14, 13 to 14, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord bring you today. Egyptians, you will see, you will never, you will see, never, Egyptians, you, you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare and decree that any Pharaoh, any enemy pursuing you, the Red Sea will open and swallow anything that is pursuing you that is not of God. And indeed, we will see the glory of God upon our lives. Hallelujah. Verse 16 to 18. Then Moses raised his hand with the stuff he had in his hand and the water separated and the Israelites were able to go through on the dry land. Verse 17 again, we see the Lord saying that I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go after them and I will gain my glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and horsemen. Again, we see God's God hardening the hearts of the enemies so that his glory be manifested. Hmm? Verse 18, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain my glory through Pharaoh and his chariots. And indeed, 
You know the story the Egyptians pursued and all the chariots of Pharaoh, they fell in the Red Sea and Moses stretched his hand again and the waters came together. In the name of Jesus this morning, may the heavens open, may the earth open and swallow anything evil that has been pursuing us in the name of Jesus. As this month is beginning, Holy Spirit, I, I hope you're praying, you're declaring these things over your lives in the name of Jesus. So we see God's glory, God's glory, God's glory. The Israelites praised the Lord, they praised the Lord. You know all the story when they finished crossing, of course they went into grumbling again. But this morning, because of the topic we have, I want to stop on this now on Pharaoh when the Red Sea swallowed his army. We see the hand of the Lord saving his people. So as I finish, as I finish this morning, I want us to declare and it shall be established in the name of Jesus. We are going to go into Psalms 24, and we are going to prophetically pray that the Lord will release his hand. In the name of Jesus, Psalms 24, verse 3, who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in any idol, or swear by a false god. God's glory can never be in a, in a data place. It can never be competed with, it cannot compete with any other idol. So this morning, you need to reflect on your lives and repent. Be holy, pursue a holy life. And verse 7, the Bible is saying, lift up your heads, all you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king of glory may come in. Verse 8, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he? the King of glory. Friends, may you welcome the glory of God in the month of September. In the name of Jesus, may every gate be lifted. May every evil gate be lifted in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, may you open the gates, open the gates of all saints, every gate of, of, the, of, of, of rebellion. May you open it in the name of Jesus. Open the chains that had locked, open the chains that had locked the door of deliverance, the doors of revival, ancient doors, ancient doors, every evil Convenance that we are laid on all saints, we break them, we break them in the name of Jesus. In this month of September, we welcome you, King of Glory. We welcome you in all saints. We welcome you in our families. We welcome you in our jobs. Ancient doors be lifted in the name of Jesus and allow the King of Glory to come in. Amen. Amen. Let us proceed to the last part. And also, this will be a prayer point. And I want to lead us to pray and declare these prophetic words that we will see the glory of God in every aspect of our life. And when it is done, when God is done, may you allow his glory to be, may you allow him to take the glory so that you do not stand in his way. We are going to look at our finances and we'll stand on Marakai chapter three. Now this comes to us, if you've not been giving tithe, I pray that as we begin the month of September, may God have mass upon you. But we will stand in the, in the uh, scripture, Marakai chapter 3, and we'll pray that the glory of God will come upon us in our finances. God, remember the tithes we have brought to you. May you open the gates of heaven and let there be abundance of, of provisions in our family in the name of Jesus. May you fight the devourer for us in the name of Jesus that we will see your glory in our finances. You will take the glory when you bless us. You will take the glory, Lord. We will not worship money. We will not worship money when you have blessed us in the name of Jesus. Those who are expecting, those who are praying to God, I need a child. In the name of Jesus, I stand in First Samuel chapter 1. We know there was a woman called Anna. She cried unto you, God. And when she said, God, if you give me this child, I will give the child back to you. Father, I pray that any woman, any marriage that is on this call that has been saying, God, I need the fruit of the womb. May you open their womb in the name of Jesus and give them a blessing, give them a child. And when you're done, when you give them that child, you, they will come to you, whether a boy or a girl. I pray that they will come to you and say, God, this is you. It has been you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for the church. In Haggai chapter 2, 
God, I stand on your word. You tell me that indeed the glory of the latter church will be greater than the glory of the former church. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that as we will come in the month of September, as we will come in all saints in the church of Uganda, oh Holy Spirit, I pray that your glory, your glory will be seen in all saints, in, uh, in, in every church in Uganda. It will be seen, the glory that is greater than the church of the times of David. The glory will be more than the glory of the church of Abraham's time, the church in the Peter's time, this glory will be greater. This glory will be greater. There shall be deliverance of souls. There shall be salvation on the altar. There shall be salvation. Chains will break in the name of Jesus. We pray for the leaders. May you empower the priests. Oh, Holy Spirit, may you fill the priests with the presence of the Lord, that none of them will take your glory. I pray for the provost, for the assistant, the archbishop, every hierarchy in the name of Jesus. Father, fill them with your power of the Holy Spirit that we will see them at work. You will use them, Lord, to feed, uh, to feed us as the congregation in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you tell me in Psalms 33, verse 12, that blessed is a nation whose God is their God. And verse 22, you tell me that your unfailing love will rest upon us, O oh Lord, as we put our hope in you. Now in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that, Lord, you will take over Uganda. You will take over the corners of this Uganda, Lord. Our leader, the president, O oh God, the ministers, O oh God, the leaders, all the ministries and MDAs, the NGOs, the, all the private sector. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that this nation will serve you. This nation will bow to only you my God, because you're the King of Kings in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's pray against every door, every gate that is standing in the way of the Lord, because we need to see the glory of God come. And friends, we cannot see the glory of God if there are gates blocking us. We are going to stand on Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 up to 3. Jesus, you've given me authority to subdue nations, to open doors before me, to open the gates in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus, I open the gates of favor upon our families. I open the gates in the name of Jesus, divine protection. I stand on your word in Revelation chapter three, verse seven and eight. I take the key of David, which opens doors no man can shut and closes doors no man can open. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that in this month of September, doors of divine favor will be open. Doors of provision. People will see joy. People will see peace. There shall be salvation in homes. There shall be restoration of marriages. There shall be blessings in our homes, in our fields. You will protect the farmlands. You will protect our businesses. The gates of hell will not prevail against us in the name of Jesus. You will break down the gates of bronze. You will cut through iron bars and you will give us the treasures of darkness, the riches stored in the sacred places in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, 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 friends, when all this is done, when all this is done, do not forget that we have a mission on this earth, and that is eternal life. Friends, you all know that the reason we are preaching this, the reason God is using us as vessels is because of his kingdom. We are not here to build houses. We are not here to give children to, birth, to give birth to children. We are not here to be the best performers. This is good. We need it in life. But friends, our ultimate goal is eternal life. And Ch John chapter 3 verse 16 says that, For God loved so his world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life, shall not perish. So this morning, I want to challenge you. We have prayed. We have released a prophetic declaration. But friends, the Lord wants your heart. The Lord wants your heart. Therefore, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. I want to remind you, friends, that the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear like a roar. Elements will be destroyed by fire. Whatever you have built on this earth will be nothing. It will be nothing, friends. Whatever mansions we have built, whichever jobs we have that we feel we can never leave because of God. I can never, me, these things of church. No, I don't have, I just pray our Father who has it in heaven. That's enough. 
friends, all this will be nothing when the roaring of God comes. Verse 14, therefore, be blameless and spotless. Friends, embrace salvation. Embrace salvation, friends. Verse 17, I'm paraphrasing through 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 up to downwards. Verse 17, be on guard so that you may not be carried away by flawless men and fall from your secure position. Verse 18, this is what I'm finishing with. May you grow in power of grace and knowledge of your, of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Let us repeat this one. To him be glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.